<clears throat> well, I suggest we get started. It's obviously been a long day, and uh, we have only the hardiest souls uh, still before us. Um, we had a session just before on terrorism. That's one aspect of uh, much violence that takes place in the world. Uh, some countries have civil wars. Uh, if one thinks around the world today about the prospects of interstate conflict, three places come to mind. Uh, one is Syria, where there is, in fact, a proxy war going on at the present time. A second is Kashmir, uh, which uh, tensions rise up between India and Pakistan from time to time. And the third is uh, East Asia, with um, uh, three large powers surrounding the Korean Peninsula and uh, remote power, the United States, uh, having an alliance with uh, two countries and a very peculiar country, uh, North Korea, in the midst of this uh, surrounding territory. We have uh, three experts, each representing one of those countries, to talk about political stability and economic stability in the East Asian region. Looking forward, not uh, to next year, uh, uh, but uh, a longer horizon, if they can um, uh, stretch their minds to what the uh, both unpleasant possibilities and any solution to the unpleasant possibilities might be. And I'd just like to start with um, uh, uh, the ambassador uh, uh, from Japan, uh, to start us out, giving us a Japanese perspective on this region, and then we'll pro proceed in the order on, on the schedule that you have. Uh, thank you very much, Richard. Uh, I'll just uh, look back a few years ago. Only three years ago, uh, the new government of Japan led by Prime Minister Abe was seen by some quarters of the region and the world as a revisionist country which is trying to change the status quo or of the history, or the history. Now, there's no such voices as far as I know. And Japan is seen as one of the countries which is bringing instability to the region. <clears throat> it, it's because uh, our relations have uh, uh, changed with countries around uh, us very drastically. Starting from uh, North Russia, now the mid of uh, uh, December, Mr. Putin is coming to Tokyo, uh, Japan, to discuss our territory issue, which has been lingering on for years. The reason Japanese government is thinking this is the right time is because we have strong prime minister, they have strong prime minister, uh, president, and also Russia is, is not in a strong position in international arena. Those three reasons. However, Japanese government has repeatedly said that we will not change our attitude regarding sanctions. We will go along with these seven countries. China, uh, our relations have uh, become a lot better in the last two years. Leaders are meeting and they're accepting our huge Chinese, uh, Japanese delegation, economic delegation, and high-level people are meeting. Of course, there are issues. Uh, Japan, like other countries, are concerned about uh, South China Sea, and we are concerned about East China Sea as well. So, uh, law of the sea, issue is already there. It's not only Japan, China, it's more a legal issue. One thing that 
bothers me as a person who really respects so much China, friend, is friend to China, is that the words used sometimes regarding arbitrary, uh, the arbitration of the court by high level officials, litter, or that's nothing, and those very negative words are not used in by large powers usually, so we are a bit concerned about it. But I think all in all, Japan-China relations are getting a lot better. Japan Korean relations is getting better as well. We uh, had put a uh, comma, have not 100% solved the so-called comfort women issue and Korea and Japan is relations are a lot better than before. India, Mr. Modi was there, Philippines, Duterte was there. So all in all, uh, the relations have been lot, become a lot better. Now, the most important issue is U United States, the country which is far from us, but the country we have alliance with the only alliance with. Some people were concerned about what Mr. Trump has been saying during the campaign, but that tone has changed with Korea, with NATO, with Japan as well, and he's now saying that Japan, US relations is the basis of his policy and he would put importance into that. Maybe there could be discussion with uh, allies on burden sharing, but I think he will know that we have done already a lot of burden sharing and that is not the real base. Now, TPP, COP21, those new policies, it may not come through right away but we don't have it anyway. So what's most important is alliance. And if that alliance is confirmed, we do not have to change our security policy. That is the key. But if we cannot defend, of course, that's a very different story. This is the very issue and we are now being assured, we think. We'll uh, wait to see uh, how it will be implemented uh, in the years to come, but this is where we are now. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, uh, basically, uh, I think if we look at the past year, the situation in the region has been uh, you can see the positive side and negative side. Uh, on the negative side, first, uh, we do see a deterioration of the situation during the better part of the, f uh, the, uh, the year. Uh, one, uh, first, the major powers relations are problematic. Uh, China and the US, uh, you know, uh, had problems over the South China Sea, first over China's construction and expansion on the rocks uh, in the South China Sea, and then uh, China's protest against the US uh, conduct of the free, so-called freedom of navigation patrols. And then uh, it, you know, the US and China had separate uh, joint military exercises in the region. And China-Japan relations uh, still uh, somehow affected by the uh, uh, disputes over the Diaoyu Island and the uh, adjacent waters. Uh, once in a while you hear the uh, media reports uh, on this kind of uh, uh, maneuvers in this area by the boats of the, and, and and planes of the two countries. And also um, public opinions uh, in the two countries uh, 
about the other country is still very low. And uh, China and South Korea relationship deteriorated uh, with the announcement of the decision uh, on the part of the South Korean government to deploy the FAST system. Uh, this led to a downturn of the relationship. Uh, with joint military exercises between, China, uh, between the US and its allies uh, and friends on the one hand, and, and China and Russia on the other, uh, many are concerned that the military maneuvers and confrontation along this line is taking shape. In the meantime, regional security mechanisms uh, are not working, uh, are not functioning properly. Uh, we have the six party talks, but they have remained suspended because of the uh, uh, North Koreans' uh, resistance to uh, give up uh, its nuclear weapons. And also uh, confronted with the South China Sea disputes, the ASEAN uh, finds it very uh, difficult to respond, so it's quite divided. The hotspots uh, one of them is uh, North Korea's nuclear development. Uh, it's a, this challenge is approaching to a threshold. Yeah. The North Korea conducted another round of nuclear tests, and as a result, uh, it is suspected that it will have the capability of launching a nuclear attack against the U.S. continent. Uh, now with the missiles and the warheads together. Uh, precisely at this moment, uh, maybe because of uh, you know, China and South Korea bickering over the FAST system, uh, uh, the North Korea launched the, uh, the, the, uh, the new, another round of nuclear tests. Uh, and at this moment, China is divided as to whether and how much to work with the US and South Korea uh, to stop uh, North Korea's nuclear efforts uh, because the FAST system is perceived as a strategic threat to, to China by, by the Chinese government. In the South China Sea, uh, the, uh, the situation uh, for a while, it was uh, getting uh, uh, very bad, you know, uh, when the military ships were uh, confronting each other. And also, uh, in the South China Sea, there is lack of progress in terms of the negotiation of a code of conduct uh, in the South China Sea. Despite the fact most countries uh, well, every, almost every country wants to have a code of conduct in rhetoric. But uh, there are also positive news. The positive news uh, include, first, uh, well, we do, have a, we, we do see a stabilization of the situation in the East China Sea. Despite lack of a, an agreement on how to manage the disputes, uh, over the sovereignty claims uh, of the Diaoyu Island, China and Japan have made sure that their uh, activities in, in, in the uh, waters adjacent to the Diaoyu Island are you know, uh, uh, managed in a way that they don't have a direct co uh, confrontation or, or, or uh, collision or accidents. Uh, and also, uh, we, see, we also see a stabilization uh, of the situation in the South China Sea. Yeah. I think the, after the ruling of the court of arbitration uh, and China's rejection of it, uh, uh, the situation actually uh, has improved. Uh, uh, in part because of this miracle uh, or, uh, of uh, Filipino election, 
a result of Filipino election, the new government of Philippines, headed by President Duet, adopted a different approach in, toward China. And, and he managed to visit China and uh, uh, come up with an agreement with China over how to manage the disputed uh, territories and, and waters in the South China Sea. Uh, and of course, in return, he got a big uh, uh, package of uh, aid from China. Uh, so uh, China's disputes uh, with the Philippines are uh, under control. Uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, China Filipino relationship way improve as China promised to help the Philippines to build uh, infrastructure projects. And, and then, you know, we saw the visit by the Malaysian Prime Minister to, to China. Uh, uh, it appeared that, you know, the, the relationship between the two countries uh, have been good uh, despite uh, overlapping claims uh, over certain uh, waters uh, uh, in, in the South China Sea. Okay. And in the meantime, uh, China and Vietnam uh, are conducting uh, talks uh, on how to manage their relationship, including uh, the disputes in the South China Sea. So, so as a result, the waters in the South China Sea are coming down. Uh, uh, for good uh, reason, uh, for, uh, at least for the time being. As the situation in the South China Sea and East China Sea quiet down, China-US relationship over this issue uh, has become less confrontational. Right. When we look at the future, we also see positive side and negative side. On the positive side, I think China favors more stability uh, now it appears you know, China has been balancing between defend uh, the need to defend uh, its uh, legitimate interests and the need to, to have stability. Uh, uh, if you talk about the previous years, probably China gives more emphasis on the former, and now it seems to me that uh, there is a, uh, a trend toward the, uh, uh, the latter. Uh, that is some favoring stability. There is no sign of new construction efforts, uh, and also uh, on the Chinese part, and, the and, and, and China also uh, makes greater efforts to push for the one belt, one road, which requires a relative stable international uh, uh, environment, especially in the, uh, around China. And, and also, uh, uh, China always faces the need uh, uh, to focus on domestic issues. You know, uh, the new uh, uh, the Xi government uh, has, has a, a, a lot of reforms uh, proposed and they, they need time and energy and resources to focus on these reforms to make it work. And, and Japan and most other claimants in the South China Sea and East China Sea uh, also have an interest in stability and in finding a way to manage uh, the disputes. On the negative side, uh, recently uh, we see uh, news uh, that Vietnam uh, is uh, conducting some kind of construction uh, on an airstrip in its controlled artificial island in the South China Sea. Uh, it is reported that uh, it's is more than, it's longer than one kilometers now. So uh, I don't know how that would affect uh, the, the stability of the region, which is uh, very fragile at the moment. Also, the, a bigger challenge is the result of the US election. Okay. Uh, so uh, the president-elect uh, Donald Trump uh, uh, he has said something and he has not said something, but because he had no experience in government, uh, his aides, we, we, we do not know. Uh, so uh, 
uh, his election poses a lot of uncertainties. Okay. We may see a, ro a more rocky relationship uh, between China and the United States. Uh, recently, Alexander Gray and Peter Navarro published an article in Foreign Policy. Uh, it's called Peace Through Strength, uh, Donald Trump's Asia-Pacific Strategy. Uh, they are uh, believed to be advisors to Donald, uh, uh, President-elect Donald Trump. Uh, in the article, they condemn Obama's policy of pivot and rebalancing for being too weak, too soft. They advocate a policy of strength on the South China Sea okay, and the East China Sea and also Taiwan. Okay. So we don't know what's going to happen uh, uh, if uh, uh, President Donald Trump takes this kind of position, then uh, we may see a more rocky relation, uh, rock, uh, you know, uh, more volatile relationship between China and the United States. And also, uh, uh, if you believe that uh, Alexander Gray and Peter Navarro's uh, position is Donald Trump's position, then we'll see more forceful effort, uh, measures against North Korea. Okay. Uh, you know, they also criticize the previous government for being uh, too soft on North Korea. Uh, so uh, maybe a, a preemptive strike uh, is uh, uh, in the list of their action, uh, proposed, uh, you know, alternatives. And, and also uh, the, 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 the campaign, during the presidential campaign, uh, uh, we see uh, Donald Trump talked about, uh, you know, uh, raising the, uh, demanding the allies to pay more for U.S. protection. And that uh, probably would uh, alienate uh, uh, U.S. allies in the region uh, and may cause some additional instability, uh, uh, at least uncertainty uh, in, in, the, in the region uh, in security terms. Okay. So in the region, most countries, uh, you know, we, we share a lot of common interests. Uh, we need political stability. But at the same time, we have uh, different countries have different views and approaches as to how to attain them. Okay. The region, therefore, demands wise leadership uh, more than ever. Uh, however, chances are it is more likely to be, I mean, the region is more likely to be disappointed than not, okay. especially given the implications of the campaign rhetoric during the recent U.S. presidential elections. Uh, so I will end with that not quite positive note. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chu. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Over the past 71 years, East Asia has marked a big economic stride and development, uh, winning over the winds of the Korean War and the uh, Vietnam War, democracy and social justice and fairness has spread a lot. But still, there are uh, sources of instability here and there. Number one issue in the, uh, our region is, of course, the, uh, uh, the question of uh, relocating the you know, new fashion, the balance of power relations between the United States and uh, uh, emerging superpower China. Uh, that's why uh, every people, uh, like everywhere, turns their attention to what the uh, uh, first coming uh, Trump government will take action, uh, will, will take a, a new orientation toward Asia. And we have to see and uh, follow up. Uh, South Korea's position is to help promote uh, cooperation and harmonious relationship between United States and China being situated in between. And we found a lot of commonality that can be shared by the two powers, and we hope to really encourage it, that kind of uh, harmonious relations be evolved in the future. 
uh, United States government alliance with Korea and Japan uh, will remain uh, strong, uh, leaving the issue of uh, uh, adding up uh, for the uh, burden sharing problem. But I hope that, and also I sincerely believe at the same time that uh, this matter of burden sharing can be settled properly uh, in due course of time uh, as uh, we have done so far uh, in the past. So let us try for that. And a TPP launch failure was a setback for uh, important countries like Japan and others who participate. Uh, we are not a uh, member of the TPP yet. Uh, we are ready to join it in the second round of uh, uh, trade liberalization program, but uh, actually it has not been done yet. Uh, the FTAAP or ISEP will, will be there and uh, promoted by China and other countries in the region, but that will take quite some time and uh, but we hope very much as a, as a uh, you know, free trading country, uh, we want very much that uh, this kind of uh, trade liberalization uh, will be realized across the Asia Pacific. Um, uh, including uh, all uh, participants, uh, including United States, Japan, China, of course, and ASEAN countries and Korea as well. Uh, rather, we expect that uh, there are bilateral FTAs still ongoing and uh, ongoing negotiation of trilateral FTAs among China, Japan, and Korea still pending. Depending on the for the causes of action by Trump government, maybe we can find uh, enough uh, dynamism to relaunch the trilateral FTA making exercise. China Japan direct confrontation of the Senkaku Island recently has been wound down. Of course, the root cause is still there. Uh, but uh, uh, overall, uh, even though there are differences of the interpretation of the past and uh, this problem of the island, uh, the tension has been wound down a little bit, and we hope that uh, this kind of uh, uh, renormalizing ties will continue to keep on going. And certainly the forthcoming trilateral summit meeting that will be held in Japan uh, may help that. Uh, for the time being, uh, due to internal situation in Korea, we have some problem. Uh, but we hope very much that this December, this meeting can be held in Japan so that uh, we can mark all the progress in, in pro uh, promoting uh, rehab, uh, reconciliation among the uh, regional countries. Uh, 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 regarding the, our ties with Russia, Russia, Russian President Putin wants very much to develop a Far Eastern vision, and he launched so-called uh, Far uh, Eastern uh, Economic Forum for uh, three years ago, and uh, last September, uh, Prime Minister Abe of Japan and President Park Geun-hye of Korea uh, attended, and uh, they met. Uh, um, uh, some agree uh, agreement to push forward cooperation at the uh, sub-regional level. And we tried on our part very hard uh, to link the railway with Russia through North Korea. And uh, we were about to sign last February, but because of bomb testing, first bomb testing of a nuclear weapon by North Korea, we had to cancel all the uh, signing programs and uh, we are uh, being delayed. We have deep question whether we should wait permanently until North Korea open up uh, to do something on European, uh, uh, Eurasian context. Uh, so we have to think about the reorient our idea of doing something, uh, not passing through North Korea, but uh, linking uh, the Far Eastern part of Russia, China, Siberia, and uh, that will lead up to Europe so that we can start building the long process of uh, uh, Russian cooperation network. Uh, but uh, the most important and far most uh, uh, imminent threat for uh, our region is North Korean uh, nuclear ambition. They, as people say that uh, North Korea had some around uh, eight to ten nuclear weapons already, and it continues developing nuclear weapons, and it continues to develop long-range delivery uh, vehicle, uh, vehicles and the SLBM as well. So it is extremely dangerous, and if left unchecked, North Korea might have uh, uh, 100 nuclear warheads in three to five years' time. 
and uh, nobody can control North Korea now, and it will be even harder by that time. So we have to embark on serious effort to bring North Korea on board, to, to force it to come back to conference table, uh, to forget about the uh, nuclear weapon, and uh, open up the economy, and accept our extended hand. Otherwise, if North Korea continues to be uh, recognized, continues to develop nuclear weapon and be recognized as nuclear de facto and de, de jure weapon state, that will mean the end of uh, uh, NPT non-proliferation treaty system, and the IEA will be seriously uh, damaged in terms of its raison debt. And this means a serious threat to world peace. It causes direct threat to security of South Korea and Japan and other neighboring countries, including China. And uh, also, the entire world will suffer from this quagmire. I think the United Nations, namely the permanent members of the Security Council, should join hand and take stern measures to address this issue. The UN Resolution 270 should be implied uh, completely, and the forthcoming new resolution uh, will be even tougher, but should be implemented uh, as uh, correctly as possible so that North Korea uh, might uh, uh, accept uh, to negotiate again. There is a sinister human rights problem of North Korea. Everybody knows about North Korean human rights violation, and recently, uh, UN General Assembly adopted another resolution condemning uh, human rights violation of North Korea and put that case, or the, put the uh, responsibility of the leader of North Korea regime uh, to international criminal court. At the moment, this is General Assembly, but I think uh, if North Korea doesn't behave, doesn't elevate the human rights situation better direction and continue to uh, develop nuclear weapons that threaten the entire humankind, uh, we have to level up the pressure and we really think that uh, uh, even the Security Council should take human rights resolution uh, for the sake of uh, uh, preventing further human calamity and uh, extreme human rights violation. But we, we don't mean only the through pressure we want to achieve this purpose. Uh, my government has suggested different means and measures, uh, like uh, the, our proposal of uh, setting up Northeast Asia uh, Development Bank and the Northeast Asia Peace and Cooperation uh, Initiative. That is to promote uh, our regional uh, security dialogue structure and mechanism. Uh, that way, uh, we can provide a uh, safe haven for North Korea to find uh, room for breathing uh, in terms of its own security and survival of the region because uh, you are being part of the family of nations in the region, so you don't need to worry about survival issue. So that is the uh, main reason why we promote this uh, so-called Northeast Asia Peace and Cooperation Mechanism and this Northeast Asia Development Bank, in addition to AIB, uh, can help rebuild uh, the North Korean economy, and this bank will be very much useful for building uh, the, uh, the uh, tr tr uh, three provinces of China and Far Eastern region of Russia as well. So everybody will take benefit, and, and in doing this bank, we definitely think that the uh, uh, United States and Japan should join in the bank together with China and Russia. And, uh, uh, but even if we do all these efforts and openness to embrace to, to uh, uh, North Korea, if North Korea continues to obstinately uh, stick to a nuclear weapon program and doesn't listen to our call for coming back to conference table, then it is better to address that situation uh, squarely now rather than uh, later, five years or six years later, so that nobody can uh, address this issue with physical means or whatever means. So uh, we really hope that North Korea change mind, but uh, if North Korea doesn't abide by uh, this uh, joint call of the international community and develop nuclear weapons, threaten the NPT regime and all the uh, fate about of the humanity, then we have to take uh, bold action in terms of uh, addressing uh, North Korean threat. 
uh, in the last previous section uh, on the uh, terrorism, there was a debate about uh, you know, the region, region death of uh, regime change or not. Uh, nobody wants to see the collapse of North Korean regime because that it pr provoke a lot of disaster and problem. But if there is no other alternative, we must accept that fact and take a bold action and some measures together with uh, the international community and the United Nations Security Council. And uh, to do that, uh, the South Korean government should embark on very serious negotiation with the Trump government, first coming Trump government, to set up a joint uh, plan of action. And, and, and on that, on building on that, we have to discuss with China and Japan and Russia, uh, mostly with China, uh, to set up common position and also discuss with uh, Japan and Russia to set up a five-party joint proposal and, and, and present it to North Korea to uh, take it or leave it. Uh, we hope very much North Korea accept and come back to conference table. And that is the best way for us to head for peaceful unification of the peninsula, which was left divided more than 71 years. I think uh, among key partners, we need deeper talks. Uh, we need very frank communication regarding the future of the Korean Peninsula, future of the nuclear bomb that North Korea has. All these type of things, we need a frank discussion and uh, deeper communication among the parties. We need to restore six party talks. If it is necessary, we have to have five party meetings, trilateral meeting of Korea, Japan, Ch United States, trilateral meet meeting of uh, Korea, Ch China, United States, and other countries as well, or even bilateral meetings with North Korea. We need to reach out all these means to help settle this program. This will be a long and arduous track. Uh, it will be very much difficult. It must also go hand in hand with pushing our peaceful unification of the divided peninsula. A, new, a true and complete solution of the North Korean dilemma can be found only in the, uh, in the promoting a peaceful unification of the peninsula and the people. I fully wish support of the audience here and uh, continue the uh, action together for right code. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, I don't have um, firm guidance from management at the present time. We're actually at the end of our hour uh, on the schedule. Um, but uh, let me at least raise the question whether the audience has any questions they would like to put to our speakers. We have a tremendous amount of expertise up here, and it's an ideal time to, uh, for you to put questions with respect to East Asia. Yes, over there. Uh, thank you very much, Tatsu Master from Japan. I have a hypothetical question to three panelists. Short answer is fine, but North Korea is developing nuclear weapons seems to be un almost unchecked. And they are already ready to install uh, on, on the head of basic missiles, possibly. So once they install all these weapon systems, and what if they may use against any of three countries, how China, Korea, Japan, America may react. What is a possible scenario or reactions? Thank you. Yes. Do any of you want to take that on? <laughs> well, may, maybe I, uh, picking up on what Professor Jia said, uh, uh, maybe I say something about um, uh, Trump administration. Uh, we actually have no idea what uh, Trump's foreign policy is going to be in general, and particularly toward this part of the world. Uh, he said uh, uh, he obviously has an animus against uh, imports from China to the United States. He said he's unhappy with the uh, contribution to the uh, U.S.-Korean alliance and the U.S.-Japan alliance of those two uh, partners. Uh, I'm not aware that he's addressed North Korea at all, 
but North Korea is trying very hard to develop a three-stage missile, and there's only one reason. We had an interesting session earlier today on space. Uh, North Korea, I'm positive, has no interest in space exploration as such. It wants to reach the United States with a weapon. That comes just this close to an act of war. And the question is how the Trump administration uh, would respond to it. But one possibility is that they will shoot down the missile. And um, Pro Professor Gia suggested that some of his advisors have uh, suggested that. He also suggested that China is, uh, wants stability in the area, but uh, North Korea um, is, does not want stability in the area. So moving to destabilize the area, at least in the respect of nuclear weapons. And so uh, I turn it over to Mr. Gia to ask, uh, Professor Gia to ask how I know this involves conjecture or history, which Chinese scholars are uncomfortable with, uh, but uh, how China might respond if uh, North Korea moves very seriously to further missile testing and the U.S. threatens to shoot down the missile. Well, it is uh, in China's interest uh, to stop North Korea from developing nuclear weapons. Uh, but uh, China has to balance between, uh, you know, uh, the, the means uh, the, uh, of stopping North Korea from developing nuclear weapons. You know, in terms of means, we are talking about economic sanctions uh, at different levels. Uh, at the maximum level, you know, we have a problem of uh, humanitarian problem. Uh, in other words, uh, if we stop food from going to North Korea, then uh, North Korean people may starve to death. Okay. And, at a, and then you have the military means. Uh, the military means, uh, you know, creates a lot of uncertainties okay, in terms of how you are going to deal with the 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 situation. Uh, whether you you will be able to secure the nuclear weapons or destroy them and create a, a, a nuclear disaster, or and and also you know what if the situation became chaos and then uh, you have you know some army officers taking control of, of the nu nuclear weapons and th that become a problem. And, and also, you know, in case of a military conflict, then what about the refugee problem? So there are all kinds of things involved when you try to think about what's the best way to deal with <laughs> the North Korean nuclear problem. I think uh, uh, on top of that, we have a problem of uh, coordinating with uh, other con countries, especially with the United States. Okay. You know, many Chinese, uh, uh, you know, uh, suspect that the U.S. Uh, wants to contain China. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if uh, this is the case, uh, to these people, uh, you know, China should not coordinate with the U.S. Uh, as much because. Uh, North Korea, however uh, a threat uh, its nuclear program can be to, for China, uh, can be a distraction to the, U, to the U.S. Okay. So, uh, and, and these people have, uh, have their own voice uh, also in China and affecting of the Chinese government. So, uh, it's a complicated problem. Uh, I think in the, uh, over time, as uh, the North Korea develops more nuclear weapons and more missiles, China's position, or conduct more tests, China's position would harden uh, to the extent that, you know, if, if, if they uh, try to test, I mean, hypothetically, if, if the U.S., you know, shoot down one of the test 
uh, testing missiles. You know, it's uh, China probably uh, would not feel uh, uh, bad about it. Okay, uh, and of course, uh, if North Korea attacks another country with nuclear weapons, uh, then definitely China pro uh, would. would would side with uh, another country if the, the attack is not provoked. Uh, so uh, it, it depends on the situation. Uh, but certainly, China, it's in China's interest, personally, I believe, it's in China's interest to stop North Korea from developing nu nuclear weapons. It's in China's interest to work with other countries uh, to make sure that this it happens. But at the level of tactics and strategy, probably we need to have more consultation. Thank you. Some, some years ago, I've forgotten the exact date, uh, China found that it had some problems with the pumps that pump oil to North Korea. And um, that, for three days, I think, North Korea did not get any oil. Uh, and that got their attention. And I suggest that should be added to the menu of possible things, which can be uh, send a message without being as pro provocative as some of the other issues you mentioned. Uh, and best. I think. Uh, uh, this I is not maybe the uh, time to uh, ask my colleagues, uh, panelists, to ask questions for me. But I, I was very intrigued by two words uttered by each one of them. Uh, by Korean friend Ju Cho Ki, he said, Korea may have to take bold action twice. Bold action, what does it mean? That's point one. For China, uh, he, he just said that uh, maybe there's a possibility of Trump administration taking preemptive strike. In that case, I think before preemptive strike, Americans would ask China, can't you twist the arm of North Korea more? If not, we'll go with preemptive strike. In that case, what would be the reaction of China? These are the two issues that come up to me. I'm not a moderator, so I'm sorry to ask, but. Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, because of all these uh, uh, crises or the critical elements, we need better uh, negotiated through diplomacy uh, and find solution while we still have one, two years' time. Uh, I used to say from the beginning of my government four years ago, we have to do it in two, three years' time, but we uh, spend only two years. We spend largely 20 years without finding solutions. So we only have uh, two to three years to settle, and we have to find the clue from next year. So that's why we need to talk very candidly among the key partners and deep talks, uh, not just uh, you know cosmetic talks and uh, you know, shinual of uh, just a suggestion of things. But to, you know we need to engage very seriously. We need to discuss all problems, and uh, at the same time, as I said. Uh, uh, we are remain open to help North Korea build up, you know, because we are one competitor, and uh, we need to uh, have uh, North Korean economy if North Korea only uh, abandon nuclear weapon program, and uh, uh, then uh, we can realize a nuclear-free Korean peninsula. So that uh, we very much need uh, uh, keen and talks and frank talks among the key partners, among the you know, Security Council members, permanent members. And uh, then still, I think we can find a uh, uh, clue of the solution. And uh, for the time being, North Korea doesn't want to talk even to Chinese about this nuclear problem, but they want to help survive the, uh, the dignity, dignity of the regime. But dignity of the regime then might face criminal charges at the International Criminal Court. That is a serious blow than even the you know, strike or whatever. So uh, we need to combine all these efforts and engage in serious dialogue with North Korea, both bilaterally and uh, you know, trilaterally or what, 
Sheikh Parito uh, to bring them to come out for a conference table. And uh, bold action, but if doing all these things, we fail to catch, prevent North Korea having 100 nuclear warheads, I think uh, South Korean public will not you know, just uh, uh, wait and uh, you know, live with uh, uh, North Korea having nuclear weapon of uh, 100 and we, we are just there. You know? So it will be a very serious uh, problem. And I think still we have an optimistic uh, uh, way of approach and uh, we should engage all our means and uh, we hope very much the start of new government will go for that direction in the United States and, and we engage in serious talk and you know, train solution. Thank you very much. My name is Ido from Japan. I'd like to ask uh, the all three speakers about uh, the uh, cooperation in trade. As uh, Mr. Juchuruki has commented, uh, you know, Japan is a member of, uh, have participated in the negotiation for TPP, and uh, Korea has expressed uh, the intention to uh, participate or to join the, the TPP negotiations. On the other hand, uh, China and Korea have made a uh, the huge, huge progress in FTA. But on the other hand, uh, the, in comparison with the big progress in the financial uh, cooperation in East Asia or among three countries after the, the uh, currency crisis in Asia, uh, the, uh, under the framework of ASEAN plus uh, Japan, China, and Korea, I think uh, the, uh, we have still uh, more room to do in the area of uh, the trade cooperation. I would like to ask, so to say, and in Japan also, uh, recently we have heard that uh, maybe considering the present situation of TPP, we should put more effort uh, in the negotiation for RCP and so on. So I would like to hear this time uh, from all other speakers uh, your views about uh, the trade cooperation in East Asia. Thank you. I could uh, supplement that question. Uh, uh, I think it's fairly clear, at least for the next two years, uh, uh, President-elect Trump uh, will not touch TPP. He will not submit it to Congress. The U.S. will not join. Raises the, there are 11 other countries who have signed on, and it raises the question about whether uh, TPP could go forward without the United States, perhaps the U.S. joining at a later time. So, uh, so, if I could supplement the question that has been put uh, by adding that, uh, who wants to begin? I think, uh, I think trade liberalization is uh, uh, all the more necessary, and we have to help save the WTO mechanism and also regional uh, trading mechanism. And we have built a lot through APEC process, Bogol Declaration, quite many achievements have been done, and the APEC is still ongoing. So uh, in due course of time, maybe uh, we can address this question together. Uh, of course, the UFTP is uh, keep alive, and we may join the second, you know, tire. Uh, but again, uh, if there is something uh, f from Korean perspective, it is better engage China as well, rather than, you know, erecting one by you know, uh, another thing. That goes to ASEP as well. So we, our position, we are the only country who has established FTA with China, with the European Union, with the United States. So we are quite okay, and, but we are very much promotive, uh, pro promoting, uh, uh, promotional in terms of uh, promoting, uh, in terms of uh, trade liberalization. So uh, we really hope that way. And we have responsibility as a big trading country, countries in, in, the, in the world while Europe is suffering from setback also, then we can you know, uh, take our own responsibility of pushing for that kind of you know, liberalization agenda on keep alive. I think uh, the Chinese government certainly favors RCEP because the threshold uh, is lower uh, for membership 
and also uh, it's more inclusive. Uh, recently, uh, President Xi Jinping talked about uh, you know, Asia Pacific, uh, the uh, regions, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, freedom, uh, uh, free trade area. Uh, so uh, on the basis that this is uh, uh, inclusive, uh, not exclusive. Uh, I think TPP is not a bad idea. Uh, it's a good idea, uh, uh, but but the. The problem uh, with uh, TPP is, uh, uh, from the Chinese perspective, is the way the President Obama s tried to sell it uh, in the Congress. You know, he used China uh, uh, as an excuse. Uh, uh, maybe this is a, he thought this is a good idea to uh, to to. to, to, to to uh, uh, make, uh, let the Congress uh, to get con congressional support, he said, "We, sh you know, we should pass the TPP because in this way we would uh, the the U.S. would make the rules rather than the Chinese." You know, so I mean, this is the the, the way uh, that make a lot a lot of Chinese think that TPP is against China. Uh, uh, personally, I think uh, probably TPP uh, uh, is more. Uh, a pursuit of the, uh, I mean, the U.S. Uh, championship of the TPP is more a reflection of the U.S. pursuit of its own interests uh, than uh, you know anything uh, than than to target China. Uh, but the problem is a lot of mo most people uh, when they hear how the rhetoric uh, and also the rhetoric on the part of the the people. Uh, who don't like China in the U.S. Uh, they, they get, uh, they think that TPP, or at least U.S. efforts to promote TPP, uh, was a conspiracy against China. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, really uh, uh, saddened to hear that uh, so much negative uh, story about TPP. However, I think uh, now we are living in the world without TPP, so why can't we wait for some time until U.S. may change? So if it is clear that U.S. cannot change uh, the attitude towards TPP, is there a possibility that we may change the clause regarding the validation of uh, the uh, TPP with the GDP clause uh, and uh, have uh, it started without United States. But uh, it's, uh, uh, I, I think we'd rather have uh, US in it. And uh, I think it, we'd like to have uh, Korea, China in it as well. I agree with uh, Chinese friend that it was not a very good way of selling that TPP saying that, hey, we can't make China uh, to uh, have the rules uh, making role. So uh, uh, I think it's not easy for China to join without with uh, that kind of statement. But I think uh, it doesn't mean that it's exclusive. And uh, after four years, we've made able to make a very high level FTA, which we have never done. And so I think we should uh, keep to that and try to have them rather than renegotiate, restart everything. And uh, it's like a sort of a pearl necklace and uh, each uh, pearl was shined uh, very carefully in 12 years, uh, in four years, the 12 pieces. And the biggest uh, one is now sort of out. But still, I think uh, we really uh, would like to finish it, uh, uh, if possible, with that biggest uh, pearl. Because uh, if, if I think we were able to attain it because U.S. was there. If without U.S., we would not have uh, come uh, this far. So we'd really like them to rethink. Although how practical in the next uh, two years, I sort of share what Richard just said. Thanks. 
Thank you very much. Uh, we've gone uh, well over uh, the hour on our schedule. I think it's time for me to bring this session to a close. I think I share, can share all of your view that uh, we've heard from three very authoritative and interesting speakers.